Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. This is going to be my week's 19 through 23 pregnancy update. So it's been a while since I've filmed an update for you. Um, not too much has really happened, but I did want to share my ultrasound results from week 20 as well as symptoms that I've been having along the way. And then of course give you an updated bump shot. So let's just jump right in. Also towards the end of this video, if you continue watching, I'll give you our top five baby names. Um, so these will be our top five baby girl names. And one of them we will probably end up using. So that's pretty exciting. We just don't have it figured out 100%. And there's a chance we might still search for other names. I'm just not sure yet. So I'm trying to talk really quiet because Bradley is taking a nap in the next room over. So just bear with me as I try and get through this video quickly and quietly. Okay, so week 19 was pretty uneventful. Um, I think it was mostly just the anticipation for my 20-week ultrasound and I had a friend in town she was visiting from Indiana with her son who's similar age to Bradley and so we were just really busy catching up and I was also working in between so it was um, uneventful as far as the pregnancy goes um, but it was it was a pretty good week and then week 20 is when we finally had our um, 20 week ultrasound and doctor's visit. So I'll share the pictures. Um, there, if you can see it, a few good profile pictures and then just girl parts and a foot at the bottom. But I'd say that the top picture is probably the best as far as um, the baby's profile goes. So yeah, she was kind of in a weird position for the ultrasound, but our tech does such a good job and she was still able to get all the measurements she needed um, for the baby. And yes, yeah, she is still a girl, even though when I did my last video with the at-home gender tests and both came back with boy, I was like, no, it can't be, but what if, like, what if the sneak peek blood test was wrong? I don't know, so I had that little bit of doubt in my mind, so I was very happy when she um, told me for sure, from the ultrasound anyway, that she is still a baby girl, and all of her vitals and measurements looked really good. She is still measuring a bit big, maybe three days ahead of her due date, and um, in like the 60th or 65th percentile, something like that. So everything looked really good. The doctor's visit was short. It was mostly, mostly just the ultrasound that took a lot of time. So yeah, that was exciting. Um, and then week 21, not that much had changed. Um, I don't remember having like too many specific crazy symptoms or anything, but I have been having a lot more pain in my hips, um, which has just continued to get a little bit worse and worse. And it's mostly like if I spend all day cleaning the house or something like that, or vacuuming, um, or just doing like a really long hike or walk, or, I don't know, then I'll get that pain towards the end of the day. So I have been trying to take it easy, but at the same time, I don't want to become too immobile because otherwise I just sit around and snack all day and gain a bunch of weight and I don't know. I'm trying to stay a little bit active even though I pay for it by the end of the day with the hip pain. And so what I found that helps for that is actually the reason I'm sitting on my bed right now is because I have this heating pad um, up to my lower back and hips. So this is what I've been using just from Sunbeam Ultra Soft heating pad. Um, it's got three different heat settings on it and just sitting on it right now. I'll show you what it looks like though. Kind of your old like grandma style hot pad. 
So, I don't know. It feels really nice. Um, and so sometimes I'll put it on. It has like an auto turn off feature too. And so I'll put it on at night when I'm falling asleep just on my hips and lower back. And then it'll turn itself off after two hours. Um, but, oh. But yeah, it's really helped um, my hip pain feel better. And then I also have like a hip brace too, which is in the other room. Um, it's just like a Velcro brace and it wraps around one leg or the other. You can change it, um, but normally it'll be, for, for my pain anyway, it'll be like one side or the other. And so I'll just put that on. I could put it like under my belly and um, that helps. A lot too and I used that a lot towards the end of my last pregnancy um, that soft velcro um, hip brace if I can find it I'll link it down below the one that I have been using but yeah I bought it oh, quite a while ago so yeah that, so that was week 21 and then um, let's look back at my last pregnancy um, from my journal so week 19 there was my bump shot and um, I didn't take one for week 20 but I did take one for week 21 and then as far as what I wrote in my journal week 19 kind of the same thing um, looks like I didn't really have too many symptoms I'm just looking forward to the ultrasound in week 20 and then in week 20 I weighed 134 pounds this time around I've still been about like f about four ish pounds more so I was at 138 pounds for like three weeks in a row and then last week um, I was about 139 pounds and now I weigh 142 at week 23 so anyway, so this says for week 20, we found out we were having a boy. Um, this is when I started getting nosebleeds my first pregnancy. And loving the kicks. Nails are getting really strong again right now. My nails have been really brittle. But I think it's just, I had some gel nail polish on it. I think it's just tail end of it growing out from where I removed it. And they're just brittle. At the tips so hopefully they get strong again week 21 um, fall had arrived my last pregnancy we did a gender reveal party um, leg cramps oh my gosh you guys the leg cramps are back and they're so bad it's my legs and my feet like my calves you know like a Charlie horse in your calf and then in my feet as well it's they've been kicking my butt I need to, I don't know, maybe get magnesium or whatever. I don't know if you guys have any recommendations. Let me know because the, the Charlie horses and the foot cramps have been quite bad the past couple weeks. Um, and then I also wrote for week 21 just having trouble staying asleep. That's still the case. I'm usually awake for like two or three hours in the middle of the night. I just can't, I just can't sleep all the way through. Let's see. Week 22, I wrote that I was nauseous again for two days. Um, I haven't felt nauseous lately. Acne's getting worse. Um, using olive oil on my belly and it's clogging my pores. So I think I'm gonna have to give that a break. And looking more and more pregnant. Yeah, so acne has definitely been getting Worse again for me too in week 22 this time around. On my back, I've been getting more acne. Um, it's kind of like the painful, big pothole kind of zits. So that's kind of a pain. Um, it's funny that I wrote that olive oil is starting to um, clog my pores on my belly. It actually wasn't clogging my pores. What that was, it was the beginning of the pups rash that I developed. Um, pups rash is a little more common in your first pregnancy and more common if you're carrying a boy. 
Um, and so I started getting the pups rash pretty bad around 24 weeks, um, but it started from what I wrote here around 22 weeks and it continued throughout the rest of my pregnancy. It was just like this itchy, uncomfortable rash, especially towards the top of my belly, above my belly button. Um, and they don't exactly know what causes it, but that was the beginning signs that I was getting the pups rash. Normally it occurs in stretch marks, um, but I didn't really get stretch marks. I just had the rash like on my skin. And then as soon as my son was born, it just went away on its own. So that was what that was. Um, I don't use olive oil as a moisturizer though now. I still use that CeraVe lotion, which I've showed you in a previous video, the CeraVe moisturizing cream. I love that stuff. And then week 23, I did another pump shot, I think. Let me find it. This was my week 23, and I'll show you my week 23 belly here in a few minutes. But that was my bump shot from my last pregnancy, and my weight was 138 pounds. Like I said, now I'm 142, so about four, four pounds heavier. Um... This was a great week. I was able to get the nursery cleaned out and organized. I'm taking six months off for the baby. Um, the only thing that bad that happened is that we got rear-ended in the car. Oh yeah, we got in a minor car accident. Um, and I was really nervous about it, obviously, being my first pregnancy and like not knowing how much pressure is okay, but it was a pretty minor accident and um, obviously did not hurt the baby or anything like that and we had another ultrasound um, the baby was still head down but they were able to get the remaining measurements for the anatomy scan yeah I had to do two anatomy scans last time because he was in such an odd position no more nausea I've just been really hungry craving honey nut Cheerios and hips are hurting so this week has been kind of crazy so we've got the coronavirus um, going on around the world right now and I was originally planning on taking nine months off after this baby is born um, I took six six and a half months with my son but because of the changes with um, our job situations um, particularly my husband's job and me taking unpaid maternity leave, it looks like I might have to take a lot less time off, which obviously makes me sad, but it's kind of just the way it is right now. Um, so I work for the government and my husband is a pilot, um, but with everything slowing down in the economy and things like that, we just aren't 100% sure if my husband's job will remain solid throughout this entire, what looks like to be possibly a recession. So with that said, I am mentally preparing that I might only take about four months off instead of nine months off like I had originally planned. So that's what it is right now. Um, otherwise... This past week's just been kind of crazy with, I don't know, everything, everything to do with this coronavirus and all the changes that are going on and kind of the lockdowns and quarantines and isolation. It's just been, it's just been tough. So I was sent home from work a few days ago um, because of the potential of being high risk as a pregnant woman. Um, so I appreciate everything our union has done in my job front to send home all those that are, that are high risk and those that are pregnant like me that don't need to be um, around so many people and potentially upping my chances of contracting the coronavirus. So I do appreciate that um, I was sent home on leave, but it's hard. It's hard just being stuck in the house now. Um, like, we go out for walks and things like that, but otherwise, you know, I just 
let my husband do all of the grocery shopping and errands that need to be ran and I stay home with Bradley and that's wonderful but it's also kind of lonely so I hope that things change soon I hope that people are able to get better and I feel for those that are financially becoming ruined over this virus. I feel for those that have gotten sick and for those that have lost loved ones. Um, so my situation, like, I really can't complain. Like, I'm home, I'm with my family, I'm healthy, and I really can't complain about any of it compared to what other people are going through with this virus. So let's hope that things get better soon. So with all of that said, I will show you my bump, my 23 week bump, and then I'll share with you the um, five names that we've been considering and one which we will probably use for our baby girl when she's born in hopefully July. Here it is. 23 weeks and change. Okay, and now I just want to share with you the five baby girl names that we've been considering. So the first one, if it was just up to me and not my husband, I probably would have named her Summer. I've always just loved the name Summer and it's perfect because we're having a baby girl in the summertime. Um, but unfortunately my husband quickly nixed that name and so unless I could change his mind, it will not be Baby Summer. But that is my top favorite name. Um, number two is Maya. That's another name ever since I was a little girl that I've loved. Um, I just think it's so pretty and classic and it's not overly popular and so I thought my award would be really pretty but once again my husband's not in love with it so I don't think we're gonna use that name but still fingers crossed it's on our list um, number three is Carly or Carlin I just think that name's adorable as well and I think Carly Ward would be a really sweet name. Um, the only downside I see to Carly is that our son is Bradley. And Carly and Bradley both ending in L-E-Y. Maybe a little too similar. I don't know. It sounds kind of... They're, they're cute together, but at the same time, it's almost like the names clash somehow in my head. So we'll see. It's still on our list. Um, number four is the name Alana. I've always loved the name Alana as well. If Bradley was a girl, he would have 100% been named Alana. And it's still very high up on our list. We might use it, just not sure yet. And then number five is the name Emily. Um, so Emma is extremely popular. But I've always liked the name Emily, which was actually supposed to be my name, but my mom at the last minute decided to go with Sarah instead of Emily. But I love the name. I always wished that was my name. And so that is also very high on our list. So those are the five names that I love and might be using. I don't think we'll decide for sure until she's born, because that's what we did with our son Bradley, we just had a couple names that we went into the hospital with and decided there. So that's probably what we'll end up doing. But I just wanted to share that with you and um, let me know if you have any recommendations. We're still open to more suggestions or what you think. With all that said, I hope that you all stay healthy out there and I hope that everything can return to as much normalcy as possible really soon um, and I will see you in the next video take care everyone